Alright guys, it is a cloudy, gloomy night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is technically Thursday night, September 17th, 2020, but we're going to pretend like it is Friday, September 18th, uh, 2020. And since it is a pretend Friday, do what I do every Friday, and that's come on here with my mangabay.com environmental collapse rant. Uh, oh yes, my name is Sam Mitchell and I am outside of the laundromat doing laundry while I still can, while there are still laundromats taking full advantage of them. So while my clothes are washing, we are going to go over to mongabay.com to see what Rhett Butler's laundry list of assaults against this planet have looked like. I have been up enjoying the Adirondack Mountains, the smoke-filled Adirondack Mountains, 3,000 miles from those wildfires socking in upstate New York, but uh, I'm sure there'll be some mention of wildfires somewhere in this roundup. We're going to start in the Philippines with this shocking story. Missing mangroves are root of contention over Philippine airport project. Huh. Work on an international airport just north of Manila has already resulted in the decimation of more than 600 mangrove trees. Do you think so? Residents say this is a key mangrove forest and an important bird and biodiversity area. Yes, and just one of several sites along the bay that is facing threats due to land reclamation projects. The Aerotropolis a 6,200-acre airport complex is part of President Rodrigo Duterte's Build, Build, Build infrastructure program, uh, which of course is part of the China Belt and Road Initiative. The cutting of mangroves is prohibited under Philippine law, but no one has been held accountable for the hundreds of trees cut so far. Hmm. A problem that residents and environmental groups say will intensify as construction of the airport returns. Yes, do you think so? Okay, we have a game changer. <clears throat> a game changer. NASA data tool could revolutionize Amazon fire analysis. So what's all this about? Now, Amazon has already seen more forest fires this year than in all of 2019, according to satellite data made available in August by a new NASA fire analysis tool. NASA's new automated system provides near real-time monitoring which could allow teams on the ground to pinpoint fires, blah, blah, blah. The new system also differentiates between fires in newly deforested areas, understory forest fires, grassland fires, and those set by small holders, otherwise known as planet nibblers, to annually clear their fields. This differentiation allows authorities to zero in on large-scale criminal arson committed by land grabbers, otherwise known as planet eaters, while preventing the criminalization of subsistence farmers, otherwise known as planet nibblers. Yes, so we have a game changer. So already uh, NASA is at odds with the Brazil Space Agency, which I think 
is claiming that there were more fires last year. The the game being changed is that NASA will no doubt count more fires than previously thought. Now that we have some somewhat objective eye in the sky. Okay, what is the newest denial going on? Biologists warn extinction denial is the latest anti-science conspiracy theory. Add extinction denial to your glossary for the collapse. <clears throat> There is a growing refusal by some groups, some groups, to acknowledge the ongoing global extinction crisis being driven by human actions, conservationist scientists say. Yes, these extinction denialist views are being pushed by many of the same people who also downplay the impacts of climate change and go against the actual evidence of widespread species population declines and recent extinctions. Scientists say this phenomenon will likely spike again this week since a major Convention on Biological Diversity report is due to be released. I think it's already been released. Uh, if it's not mentioned here uh, elsewhere in Manga Bay, uh, the newest, you know, they did this review of these 20 UN biodiversity targets they set in 2010 to be accomplished by 2020 and exactly zero, exactly zero of 20 targets were met, uh, biodiversity targets uh, set by the United Nations being met between 2010 and 2020. Yes, the authors of a new report on extinction denial advise experts to proactively challenge its occurrence and present the cold, hard, scientific facts. There is only one problem, and that is uh, that, you know, more and more research showing that, that any sort of denialist, doesn't matter what, what it is, pretty much, the, you know, mainly climate change, and, and this one too, and I would certainly add overpopulation denialists that you present them with the cold, hard, scientific facts, and all they do is ramp up their denialism. They have no interest, anybody denying the sixth mass extinction going on in this planet has exactly zero interest in the cold, hard, scientific facts has nothing to do with changing opinions. And in fact, uh, the fact is that it will probably only make the denialism worse. Okay, I love it when they ask a question uh, in a headline. The question this week being, can public lands unify, unify divided Americans? Well, uh, unfortunately, I mean, I, I, without even reading the story, uh, anybody spending five minutes on this subject, particularly since Donald Trump has been elected, knows that our public lands are in many ways right up there with the C word as being one of the most divisive uh, wedges between Americans. Uh, our public land debate is a full-fledged, chest-beating, I can yell louder than you are. You have the right-wing, you know, uh, Bundy gang 
uh, you know, with full support by Donald Trump and his supporters, you have those right-wing clueless morons who think the highest and best use of our public lands is to sell it, uh, you know, give it to the ranchers and the oil drillers and the frackers and, and the usual list of suspects. You have that group. And then you have the group that I'm part of that think our public lands should be, instead of handed over to private industry, should be kept as the public domain. But uh, just one more of these uh, divisive, yes. So what is this? Obviously, they're going to say yes. Uh, who is the apocalyptimist of the week, some dude named John Leshy. It might be hard to believe in the current political climate, but public lands were a unifying issue for Americans until quite recently. Yes. Um, blah, blah, blah about how it used to be that bipartisan consensus culminated in the creation of a, a vast network of national parks, forests, and monuments, which are collectively visited by tens of millions of people annually. Uh, so this guy, John Leshy, a professor of law, blah, 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 uh, thinks, still believes that it is possible to go back to normal. Yes, uh, good luck on that. Uh, you will not believe this. That You know, this is why I love Manga Bay. For European chemical giants, Brazil is an open market for toxic pesticides banned at home. In 2018, Brazil used more than 60,000 tons of highly hazardous pesticides now banned in the European Union. And you will not believe that three Europe-based multi-billion dollar chemical companies control 54% of the world's market, and uh, their pesticides are still being sold in Brazil. Uh, you know, the, these things that have been banned in Europe for more than 30 years, of course, uh, do not. Uh, the, the number one uh, being Bayer, which, you, you know, now includes Monsanto, BASF and Syngenta are the big three bogeymen in this story. Uh, Manga Bay has really done a good job of picking up on Planet of the Humans. And this week's, they, you know, Manga Bay has its own YouTube channel. And their video of the week on their YouTube channel... Um, is why biomass burning is not a climate solution to shedding more light on this unbelievable joke that, that one person believes anymore that burning trees is going to save the planet. Burn more trees to save the planet. Um, okay, guys, I'm just, you know, as always, good Lord, we're already 14 minutes into this. Uh, I'm, I'm skipping through a whole lot of these. Um, yes, what's going on in sub-Saharan Africa? Uh, how about... The African Leadership University has launched an innovation challenge to develop new commercial ideas. Huh. 
new commercial ideas for rural livelihoods in sub-Saharan Africa to protect biodiversity. Yes. Uh, applicants to the Innovation Challenge will develop non-tourism business ideas that will, new business ideas in Sub-Saharan Africa that will, A, protect ecosystems, B, empower communities, and of course, convince clueless moron investors. They are both scalable and financially sustainable. Obviously, you do not see the word uh, environmentally sustainable business ideas to save sub-Saharan Africa going into the 2020s. You will not believe what Friends of the Earth. Friends of the Earth, what is on their minds this week? BlackRock. BlackRock and other asset managers are enabling deforestation. Who ever would have thought of this? A new report released by Friends of the Earth say that the big three asset managers, which would be BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street, are enabling the destruction of the world's rainforest. Hmm, do you think so? All three firms have voted against corporate shareholder resolutions to report on or prevent deforestation a total of 16 times. Their portfolios include $700 billion invested in companies uh, and some uh, hilarious group called the Consumer Goods Forum, which is a corporate consortium that is set to fail to meet deforestation targets for 2020. And if that wasn't enough, don't forget Morgan Stanley, how Morgan Stanley is linked to deforestation in the Amazon. Do you think so? Investigators show new cases of illegal deforestation among suppliers of companies in which the bank holds major stakes. Increasing deforestation in the Amazon this year has prompted banks and funds to promote changes in investment that affect the region. But some investors with strong influence in the Amazon have resisted the calls for reform, including Morgan Stanley, a shareholder in two of the three largest beef producers in Brazil. Yes, so we have now gotten to the bottom of what caused the late of that big oil spill in Mauritius that wiped out some the ecosystem in the middle of nowhere. Birthday party on ship may have led to oil spill in Mauritius. A Japanese ship that ran aground on a coral reef off Mauritius may have changed course to get a mobile data signal for a birthday celebration on board. Yes. Uh, the ship crashed into the coral reef barrier and leaked about 1,000 tons of fuel. Uh -huh. All right, so much for that birthday party. Uh, again, guys, good Lord, we're almost 20 minutes into this. Um, okay. Wow. You will not believe this. Here is a look of 500 years of species loss. You know, here in the Western Hemisphere, you will not believe this. Humans. Humans 
drive defaulation across neotropics. That word defaulation, defaulation, uh, meaning obliterating our fellow earthlings off the face of the planet. A new study indicates it is human activities, human activities such as number one, over hunting, habitat loss, and fires have contributed to a more than 56% decline in species in mammals in the American tropics. Um, they're, they were looking at data going back to the time of the first European colonization of the American uh, tropics. Uh, do you think so? This, this isn't even talking about uh, what humans uh, were, you know, did to the Western Hemisphere before 1492. They're just looking at it from 1492 until now. Uh, but of course, by the time we got here, uh, you know, we were pretty much batting cleanup. Uh, let's see. Moving, jumping ahead. You will not believe this. Stolen from the wild, rare reptiles and amphibians are freely traded in the European Union. A new report illustrates that protected reptiles and amphibians are being illegally caught in their countries of origin, but then legally traded with the European Union. Uh, you know, this is the third report. Uh, traders are particularly interested in rare endemic reptiles and amphibians. And I have mentioned this before, you know, these uh, wildlife poachers, you know, for the pet trade, will refer to scientific papers to locate newly identified species. Every time I read one of these articles talking about, uh, you know, how they've, how they've discovered a new species of animal. W well, what do you think? Uh, anyway, it is these people, uh, you know, and, and Manga Bay has to take some responsibility for this. Uh, you will not believe uh, this. I think we already mentioned this last week in case you missed it. Poaching and other pressures mount on jaguars in the Americas. In the past seven years, trafficking of jaguars and their body parts has become a major threat to the species with China, China being the main destinations. Uh, there you go. Who would have thunk it? Uh, back to the Philippines, Manila's new white sand coast is a threat to marine life. Yes, the Philippines Department of Environment and Natural Resources, which is a contradiction in terms, has come under fire from green groups and government officials after dumping dolomite sand, uh, typically used in construction, on the shores of Manila Bay as part of a beautification project. Yes, you know, it never ends. Uh, the view from above. How do we know what is really burning in the Amazon? As of September 10th this year, more than a thousand major blazes had occurred in the Amazon this year alone, making it... Um, 
one of the worst fire years ever. Now, I'm going to mention the C word here, guys. The corona panic means there are fewer observers, including media organizations on the ground this year to report fires to the world, leaving the bulk of the job to satellite fire detection systems, which we started out with. Uh, anyway, maybe NASA's coming to the... Uh, now, uh, again, I, I read this headline with an absolute grain of salt and predict that NASA will override this BS. Rise in Amazon deforestation slows in August, but fire surge. Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not even going to insult my intelligence or yours. I don't know why Rhett Butler lets his own intelligence be insulted like this. Uh, so, compared to last year, uh, compared to last year, they're claiming that deforestation has dropped a little, but at the same time, uh, the, the deforestation data excludes, excludes forest loss from fires. So it does not take into account the more than 1,000 major fires uh, being registered in the region since late May. Fires in the Amazon have accelerated rapidly in recent weeks, rising to 53 major fires per day in September, up from 18 in August, and two in July, uh, even if you factor in, if you believe the, this crap for one minute and pay no attention to the forest fires, still uh, deforestation for the year is up 10 percent over last year. Uh, Alright guys, my looks like my laundry is wrapping up. So just real quickly, let's run run this out. Oil palm plantations in Sumatran watershed worsen flooding. Who would have thunk it? Uh, here is threatened species caught in crossfire of ongoing land conflict in Myanmar. Who could have imagined that? Did you do you believe, guys, that we have a crisis in Venezuela? Ha! Huh. We have a crisis in Venezuela. Uh, and then they wrap up with a, a continuation of last week's good news story of 2020 that humanity may never hit the 10 billion mark. I think it is safe to say that humanity will never hit the 10 billion mark. The question is, will it hit the zero mark? and be the best news of the 21st century, the extinction of the human race. But between now and then, I will be here uh, chronicling the collapse of it all. If you uh, enjoyed what Rhett Butler had to share with you this week, please give Rhett your love and give this video a thumbs up. And by all means, come uh, over here and subscribe to Collapse Chronicles and get out there and do your laundry while you still can. Bye, guys.